Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're going to continue with D3. D3 actually consists of many parts, like JavaScript, uh, SVG, CSS, HTML, and so on. So actually, quite a few of what I call prerequisites. So let's look at them uh, before I dive into D3. Since the charts that you create in D3 will be running in browser, so that means you need to know how to debug your D3 charts. And to do that in Chrome, for example, what you will do is to open the web page that includes uh, your D3 charts. And then you can right click on anywhere, and then you can click the Inspect button. And that will allow you to look at the source code of your chart. And in other browsers like Firefox uh, and Safari, it's similar. So right click on any element on screen and click Inspect or Inspect Element, then that will allow you to look at the source code. And also something you will need to do quite often is to also bring up the console and so that you can see the error messages uh, since you will be programming in JavaScript. Something that may be new to most of you is that when you are uh, running a D3 visualization, especially on your uh, local host or local computer, uh, instead of running it through the web, uh, is that you will need to start what we call a, a simple local server. Um, the main reason is that if your uh, chart is reading data or data file uh, from your disk, then there is a security measure in most browsers uh, to prevent that from happening. Um, so this is a necessary thing to do for Chrome. Um, it's not necessary for Safari or Firefox. And to launch a simple server, the easiest way is probably using Python. So in Python 2.x, you would type Python minus m simple HTTP server. And you also need to provide a port. And in Python 3, uh, the little shorter command, uh, Python uh, minus m HTTP server, also need to apply the port. Uh, 8,000. And after you launch these two commands, either way, um, then you will go to your browser, and then you will say uh, localhost, and then you colon, and then you provide uh, the port number. So this will allow you to access files that are hosted on your computer. So in other words, it's actually turning your computer into a web server, and you're just accessing the same web server as uh, what you're using. So if you're new to JavaScript, you will need to be doing a lot of that uh, when you're creating D3 charts. And if you're new to it, um, you will need to be prepared with a lot of confusion. Um, so JavaScript is a scripting language, and uh, it can do a lot of type inferring. It's pretty flexible, but also because of flexibility, it can keep a lot of hair pulling moments. And I'm pretty serious about it um, because that. Uh, is something that you will be running into a lot. And this is a, actually a great video that I encourage you to watch. You can start at, with 1 minute uh, 20 seconds. It will tell you about some of the uh, funny and yeah, funny, but probably also frustrating things that you run into and help you foresee the quirks that you need to work with when you're programming with JavaScript. So we'll give you some JavaScript 101 or JavaScript 102, if you would, about uh, what you might need to be careful about. So if this, you are new to JavaScript, uh, all variables are global unless you add the keyword var, V-A-R. So what that means is that in a function, if you had just say uh, create or declare a variable x and then assign uh, 300, value 300 to it, then it's actually a global variable. That means you can access it everywhere. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to restrict the scope to only the method itself, then you should add the, uh, very, the name uh, var. And semicolons in JavaScript are optional. So you can include it or not. And my suggestion is that be consistent. So if you are using semicolon, just use them throughout. If you don't, then just do not use them throughout. So just avoid confusion. Double quote and single quote in JavaScript is the same. And JavaScript arrays and objects are similar to uh, what you expect in Python lists and dictionary. And uh, object.key is the same as uh, kind of object and a square bracket and putting the key value in uh, quote. You'll be printing error messages or uh, text to the console a lot. So to do the printing, you would do console.log. So JavaScript supports functional programming style. And a lot of people say that uh, JavaScript is more like a multi-paradigm programming languages because it also supports other kind of programming styles. So what that means about functional programming is that functions are themselves objects. So that means they can be stored as variables. And because of that, they can also be passed as parameters into methods. 
And D3 uses this ability extensively. So if this is new to you, functional programming, so it's an example to uh, give you an idea what it does. So in this example, we are trying to uh, take the square root of a series number. So we have a number 1, 4, and 9. And we want to take a square root. So that means we will get 1, 2, and 3. So in the example here, uh, we are using uh, a function called math.square. And this is a function that we pass in as a parameter to numbers.map. So the map function is a function that will apply whatever you pass it into in, as a parameter and, and then apply the function to every element of an array. So what that means is since our function is math.square root, so that is as the square root function that's going to apply to every single element in the array 1, 4, 2, 9. So naturally, we're going to get 1, 2, and 3. So here's an example just, you just saw, uh, functional programming. So we need to look up a lot of information about JavaScript in general. And uh, the Mozilla Developer Network is the excellent, probably the best uh, JavaScript reference. So you can, of course, go through the website, uh, go through the whole uh, reference. But it's uh, really long. So the easier way to do it is actually just Google the command. So you can say type Google, uh, go to Google, and then uh, type a command, and then MDN, which is uh, short for Mozilla Developer Network. And they give you uh, full information about the JavaScript commands. In D3, we, you will see a lot of what we call method chaining. So method chaining is what we call synthetic sugar. So that means it doesn't really change uh, what the program does, but it's more to um, make, potentially make the program uh, easier to read. Um, so what that means is that uh, every method, or most of the methods in D3, they will actually also return the object itself um, that it was called on. So here we're looking at uh, two pieces of code that does the identical thing. So for example, the, at the top, we say group.attribute x5 and attribute y5. So what that means is we're trying to set the x and y coordinate of group, whatever group is, to 5 and 5. So here you notice that right after calling dot attribute, we call dot attribute again. The reason we can do it is because the dot attribute method return a reference to the object, which is group. And so that allows us to call dot attribute again, because essentially we're calling the function uh, from of uh, the group. And of course, it's equivalent uh, to writing out the two commands uh, one by one. So that means same effect as in calling group dot attribute x five and then calling immediately group.attribute y5. In D3, to create graphics, you will need to learn about SVG. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. So this is, uh, you can think of it as a mathematical formula that you can use to generate very smooth looking uh, graphics, where no matter how much you zoom into the graphics, it's still very smooth. It's uh, different from what we call raster uh, graphics like uh, JPEG, GIF, PNG, and so on, where you're zooming into those pictures, you will see that they are pixelated. When working with D3 graphics, you also need to work with a very unnatural coordinate system. So in data analysis, when we're creating charts, uh, often we expect the origin to be at lower left. But in uh, SVG or in HTML, the uh, origin actually is top left. So that means when you're creating bar charts and so on, you actually need to think uh, how to start from the top left instead of starting from the lower left. So SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and is actually an XML document. So that also means that you're essentially writing a markup. And by parsing those markup, uh, you're able to generate these uh, graphics. For example, you can say, I want to create uh, a circle. So you can write out the uh, line circle r equals 5 fill uh, equals green. So that means you want a circle a radius of 5 and using the fill color green. And it's part of the W3C standard and supported by all three major browsers. So for that reason, it's great to uh, deliver your visualization in D3 because everyone can uh, see it. So we'll cover some of the basics in SVG. For example, we cover the SVG elements, uh, circle, rectangle, uh, G, which stands for group, and also how to show text. So the F SVG element is what we call the overarching uh, canvas. So this is the canvas where you will draw your visualization on. And optionally, you can provide the width and height when you create it. And to create SVG, uh, the way that you do it in JavaScript is you would want to first pick out 
uh, the, the container. So in this case, we have like a div uh, with an ID uh, called this. So we will uh, first select it. So select and then uh, pound this. So that we're selecting the div by its ID. And then you will call append. So that is when you actually add the SVG element um, to the div. So after adding the canvas, then you must want to start adding elements, like adding circles, rectangles, and so on. So they are very similar. For circle, you will need to specify the attribute like the uh, center of the x coordinate and the center of the y coordinate. So again, remember that the uh, origin is at the top left. So that means all these values are relative to the top left corner of the container. And you also specify the radius. And optionally, uh, you can provide the fill color, the stroke, the stroke width. And similar to adding uh, SVG to the canvas, you would say dot append and then uh, provide circle as uh, the tag that you want to add. So rectangle is very similar. So you, here you would specify x and y. So again, this is relative to the top left corner. And uh, you will also provide the width and height of the rectangle. And similar to circle, you can optionally provide the fill color, stroke, and stroke width. Creating a bar chart using rectangle, it might be conceptually very simple. But again, remember that since the coordinate system, the zeros start at top left. So that means you want to create a bar of a certain width and height. You need to think about how uh, it would start or uh, its layout relative to the top left. So this can be a little nat unnatural because you need to actually subtract the part of the bar from the top left. So when creating charts, you will likely need to manipulate a group of elements, such as in a bar chart. You may want to apply the same color to all the bars in the chart. So instead of positioning every element individually, so how do we do that to save ourselves some trouble? So instead of placing everything one by one, uh, can we do that all at once? So you can use the G or the group element to do it. So G is a generic container element. So that means you can put a lot of different things into it. Uh, you really can think of it as just a way of grouping things. And after grouping elements, then you can uh, apply transformation. Let's say moving the whole group of elements all together. You can also uh, change the color, change the stroke, and so, so on all at once. And very similar to other text that you've seen, uh, the way that you create a group is you use the append and then append G. And once the group is created, to add things to the group, then you can say group.append, let's say add a circle, or append a rectangle, or append text. When creating visualization, you likely need to select things, uh, such as uh, selecting all the bars and then applying some color, or selecting all the data point of a particular series and then doing something to it. So there is a very powerful way based on CSS cascading style sheet uh, to select things. But to select things, you need to first assign things to uh, what you want to group together. So there are diff different ways of doing it. So one is you assign an ID to every individual element. So ID is supposed to be unique. So that means once you use an ID, you should not use it again. So you already saw that previous example where we can assign, let's say, uh, the ID this to a diff element. So to recall this particular element, then you would uh, use the pound uh, key. So pound this that would give you the element that is assigned the ID this. Another way is to can recall an element by its tag name. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to get all the circles, then you can just get, uh, say, a one circle. So here in this case, there's no pound key. And the third way is by class name. So that means you can assign uh, the class uh, to different elements. So they can be a mix of circles, a mix of rectangles. And in this case, we can say that as long as an element has, has the class name, then we can recall it using dot class name. So here we have the class name canary. So dot canary, that would uh, give us all the elements that have uh, canary as their class name. And the fourth way is by attribute. So that means I want a specific value. Let's say I want all the circles whose color is blue. Then you can use the syntax here to pull all those elements out. Actually, there are numerously many more ways to assign things or to select things. So there's a full list of them, and the URL here shown on the screen. A very powerful way to select and assign things is 
uh, through the combination. So for example, you can actually do something called n. So let's say I want all the circle that has a particular class name. So that means I want circle n canary, for example. Then uh, doing circle dot canary, that will be applying the n condition. And similarly, you can say, uh, I want circle or anything that has a class canary. Then what do you do? Then you will do circle comma dot canary. So here, slight difference uh, from the example you saw previously. Uh, here, we're using the comma to separate the two kind of selection. And what we will get then is all the circle, no matter what class names they are assigned to. And also, we'll get anything that has a class name uh, canary. So that means you can get a rectangle whose class name is canary, and so on. So in this video, we look at some of the prerequisites of D3, so about uh, JavaScript in general, about SVG, and also about CSS, how to assign classes and how to recall classes.